Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. This is another edition of Stars, Stripes, Anfield Nights, uh, hosted by LFC Transfer Room. Really happy to be here on another Tuesday night. Um, have Menti with me tonight, joining. Uh, appreciate him showing up. How you doing, Menti? I'm good, I'm good. How are you, Drew? I'm doing all right. Good weekend results for us. We could touch on that. Um, Seems like Arsenal fans are pretty happy, and they probably should be. It's not easy to go to Man City and get a result, but I think the best result for us in the end. What about you? No, no, I completely agree. I mean, Arsenal should be happy in a way. Um, I mean, it, it, it just shows progress that they drew at, you know, the Etihad. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm excited, man. Yeah, it's um, an interesting week. It'll, things are coming thick and fast now, so we'll we'll get into that, but... Uh, big topics that are just hitting the uh, hitting the news pretty much every day. We'll start jump right into it. But Ruben Amarim, uh, we were talking briefly before the stream started, but you know had a good result today. Uh, knocked was it Benfica out of the Portugal uh, Cup, so big result for the team. You know, his old club playing, I believe he played for that club, uh, Benfica. So probably a big big win for him, but. Um, he's kind of, what was it, after the game, he had no comment or we'll see as the uh, answer to the question about management. But uh, just a general impression of uh, him as a manager, if you know anything about him as a player, what kind of guy do you see him as? Um, I don't know much about him as a player, um, but I've been watching, you know, like a lot of videos as soon as the sh uh, Shabby thing that he was staying. I just started studying him because he's the next top candidate. Um, but he seems like he's pretty good. He seems like he's like more tailored for Liverpool than Xavi. Um, I know he plays a three, four, three. Uh, he, in most of the videos I've watched, he's really good with, uh, leadership. He's good with the, um, players and what he's really good at is using the youth. Um, it looks like it's worked out for Klopp as well. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't look bad to me. It's better than the, all the other options we have. I mean, everyone was... You know, hyping up the Zerbi, and you saw how that worked out this weekend. But um, this guy's not bad. I mean, he was he was a former Benfica player. Uh, they he coached five games at Braga, beat the uh, first five games he won against the top three teams. Instantly, the uh, Sporting, when they were in a financial crisis, they paid the ten million clause to get him. So um, I think it might it might be beneficial for us. So hopefully, it works out in our favor. You know, I don't want to get our hopes up like Xavi. But look like Barca coming in now too, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I almost I feel like it's another one where we're getting our hopes up, and like Jude Bellingham, we're like done yeah. deal, you know, every, links everything, and um, I'm, st I'm still not crossing <laughs> Abby Alonso off the list. We'll see. I don't I don't want to call a nail in the coffin yet, but um, I'm definitely researching Amarim a little more now uh, since that news, but. Uh, yeah, similar to what uh, you're saying about what you've read about him and seeing about him, I think he composes himself really well. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting that I read up on was that he refrains from engaging in discussions about referees in his conferences. So I'm wondering um, if that will last if he moves over to the <laughs> Premier League. Do uh, you think he'll get away with that in the Premier League, or do you like? And I think that might be. I'll phrase this question to you, like. Do you think he gets away with that kind of politeness in the Premier League? Is that something that's going to be welcomed? Or is this going to be a huge kind of shock in terms of Premier League media, uh, as opposed to what he's used to? Um, I think the Premier League media is just, like, way more intense compared to all the other leagues. You know, obviously La Liga has its own, you know, benefits if you're the top two teams. But I just feel like mannerisms like that is just something that he's had his whole life. So that's something he could bring over. But when he comes to the Prem, there are going to be instances where the refs are going to aggravate him. Um, we'll see how he handles it. But from what I've been seeing, uh, from what like Portuguese media has been saying, he's going to be like a great guy. Uh, he should be able to handle it. But we we'll see how he handles it when he actually comes over, if he does. But uh, he seems like his mannerism and behavior is like capable of being well. It's only going to be beneficial for him uh, during that hiring process. FSG's out put uh, gonna put that in account. He seems like he's very well media trained as well. Um, so it's just bonus points for him. So 
Yeah, I agree. I agree with you with that. Like the for me, that's point, bonus points as well. I'd rather have a manager who's well composed in the media. I've said before though, I like a Jose Mourinho, but also think you have to have the the pedigree to sort of back that up. Um, I don't think you get a deserve getting away with it or someone who hasn't kind of earned their stars and stripes for um, kind of going going head to head with uh, media or other managers in general. Mm-hmm. So. Um, definitely appreciate that composure, but, uh, Jamie is talking about how Ornstein, uh, writer, journalist Ornstein saying the manager search is very data-based, um, and piggybacking on that, Paul Windows, do you think MRM is so young in his thirties could be a problem? He's barely older than Salah and Verge. We know FSG, um, like younger managers or something to build projects with. We saw the kind of. Uh, ultimately the failure of Brendan Rodgers at Liverpool, but still with Klopp, the young, although he brought a lot more experience to the role, do you think MRM checks those boxes, but, or do you think his experience and his youth counts against him? Um, I think players w- would have to respect him in a way, just because this is going to be an FSG hire. Um, and Edward is back. So we know like he's a little bit more ruthless when it comes to players and behavior uh, like that. Um, Klopp, when he, when he was at the head, you know, they were winning, very successful, and he was very loyal to the players. But with the with the infrastructure, I doubt behavior like that would be tolerated. Um, but if it's selected by the hierarchy, I feel like they're all going to have to respect him. Uh, they're going to have to, you know, just give him time to actually get to know him before, you know, just push him out the way. Um, but that's just with time. I feel like uh, everyone will earn their respect. Uh, he's a very intelligent coach, so... Um, I think that should be a factor, Paul. Uh, totally agree with that, Menti. Definitely, it doesn't seem like we have really many big egos, if any mm-hmm. at all, in the locker room. Uh, like players are going to go head to head with the manager yeah, and question yeah. them, at uh-huh. least out of the starting gates. But um, let's see. Uh, we'll move more a little towards tactics. We'll entertain the Amarim um, manager appointment for now, um, but. Uh, he has that three four three diamond formation, the kind of three mobile defenders, um, one covering space, uh, defensive midfielder, two controlling midfielders, and then the attack minded players with one striker up top with two touchline hugging wingers. That's what I've seen slash read about. So, um, how do you see that three four three diamond formation? Uh, affecting Liverpool do you think that fits as a natural progression and who do you think misses out who fits into the system who doesn't I think uh from all the videos like you said we've seen in more research he's a coach that uses the 343 um and we're, we're overdue for like a new change of uh style so it's a little bit more modern um Allison automatically goes in the goal uh Kanate on the right Van Dyke in the middle um, and for who misses out, it's obviously the left-hand side. Um, I could see us going in for um, maybe Anasi or someone like that type of caliber to be that third. Um, and the left wing back as well, I feel like I love Robertson, but uh, we, we all know he's a slightly declining. Um, he'd be a good you know, uh, squad player, but I could see us um, going and getting someone new. Um, but other than that, you could put Endo, uh, McAllister, um, Trent on the other side. Trent has to go in. I get it, but Bradley's been good too, and I'm a huge Bradley fan. It's all just up to the coach at the end of the day. Uh, but I think Trent's just, I mean, he's too good at soccer for him to be on the bench. Um, so Trent's going in, and obviously, you know, Salah, uh, and then Luis Diaz right behind Nunes. And, you know, it's been a long time since we've seen Salah behind the striker rather than far out, like how Klaus has been playing him. Um, I think he'll be a little bit more lethal like that. Um, I don't know if you have any changes that you want to make, if you if you have some other players you'd like to see in there. I honestly have no idea, Menti. You, you yeah. <laughs> um, I think I from, yeah, no, it's it's interesting because um, it's like, who's he going to prefer? You imagine the South American players or Portuguese players are going to get the nod just – which is natural. Uh, so I wonder where players like Robertson or Gakbo fit in uh, moving forward. For me, that's like, I'm more worried about who misses out 
and who fits in because I think we certainly have the the quality of players to fill every single position of his four three or three four three diamond formation. Uh, for me, even like I love the Anasio shout, um, filling a, a left center back, but I'm also a huge Joe Gomez fan, so I'd love to see him play. And then maybe Kwanzaa stepping up already. He's kind of shown that he may deserve a chance. Maybe you know, come uh, summer, uh, he gives gives Amram something to think about. But um, we'll see with Matip's situation. It's just such a huge transition. It's hard to it's hard to really. Uh, you know, think about it at this point. I don't want to with um with the league and everything going this season, but I bet the you know, Edwards is already thinking about next season at this point. So um we'll see, but um let's see. Do you think that there are better options than ever MRM right now? And should we be looking at them or Anybody who challenges Amram, do you, would you be happy with Amram? And who do you think should challenge him for future manager of Liverpool? I don't see anyone currently challenging him right now. Um, just because he's a coach that went into sporting that hasn't won something in the last, what, like 19 years till he got there. Then he wins the league, obviously. And he's doing, he's won the cup with them as well. He's doing really well this year. They're still up there. Uh, they have a chance to win it again this year, and as well as another cup. Um, the one thing that I uh, that I think that FSG likes is that he's been working with a budget his whole entire time at uh, Sporting, just because they've been going through financial issues his whole career. So I think for him, eventually he has to make that big leap, and the window is us. Or, and I've been seeing today a lot about Barcelona. Um, I feel like we're a little bit way more financially, you know, better than Barcelona. Um, and we're doing really well in the league. So I um, I can see that's a little bit more, you know, appealing to him. Um, but yeah, no, I don't see anyone competing with him right now. Like, I really don't. I mean, I don't know if you know any other coaches. I mean, it's, it's tough. Like, I would have, you know, given the classic, like, Nanglesman or Flick, but I don't like Nanglesman's, like, kind of reputation, that, that thing he had uh, in the media. That he was... le- you can't leak stuff. He, he's automatically not a Liverpool coach. I yeah. know what you mean by that, yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't sit well with me. The only other one, like, that I would, like, would be excited about, but no, it's probably – just a no go is uh was it Inzaghi on Inter Milan. Um, I think he's a pretty fantastic coach with what he's done with that club to kind of knock off uh, Juventus from their perch. Um, but oh, yeah. uh, I think he he's gonna say English. Yeah, he, Wait, doesn't, wait, he know, doesn't know English. I don't think he does. That's what I was reading. So. I oh, okay. I think he. I think they're about to give him a new contract. That's what I saw. So that's why he wasn't even in. Um, the conversation for Liverpool just because I know they're going to reward him. Um, they're mm-hmm. doing pretty well. This, they're doing really well this year. So um, the gap is like, what, 16 points? So they basically have that title already locked. Uh, one of the uh, – just want to address this real quick. John Somers, uh, your question, I'm going to tag that one for the end. We answer questions at the end. Very good question. Excited to talk about Tyler Morton and Carvalho with Menti at the end. But – uh, to keep with the topic for now, I'll throw this one out there from Paul Lindo. Thomas Tuchel will be a free agent soon. I'll speak first since you're uh, shaking your head already, Monty. But uh, I would have been very excited. Not maybe not very excited. That's stressing it. But at a time, I thought he was a very good coach. Um, I still remember the Dortmund game at Anfield when we came from behind. It was a 3-1 at the time and won 4-3 with the with the Lovren goal in like the 90th minute to get us to that Europa League eventually final Klopp's first season. But I thought Chutel was a very setting uh, manager at that point. I thought Chelsea, I thought he was kind of done dirty at Chelsea, didn't really do anything that deserved to be uh, kicked out. But I'm really, he's spoiled for maybe based on his Bayern um, his Bayern tenure. Uh, how do you feel about Tuchel? I mean, yeah, I'm I'm with you on this one. At a point, um, I thought Tuchel was a great manager, but then I realized that when you watch his career, he's just like he just kills certain players' developments. Like when he went to Chelsea, like 
he literally just focused on defense and just disregarded like the wingers. Like he killed Pulisic's career. Um, he went to Bayern Munich. You see how Musiala at the beginning of the season was horrible. Um, Kim and Jay was decent last year, and then he brings in Eric Dyer, and Eric Dyer starting. Why is Eric Dyer starting? It's 2024. Uh, I mean, they're about to lose the league for the first time in 11 years. And the only reason why they won the league last year is because Dortmund choked it. It's not because Tuchel was a good coach. Literally, Dortmund choked it. But um, Tuchel was, I mean, he was good for that run when he sent Chelsea to the Champions League final. It was, it was insane. I remember um, watching Madrid and Chelsea play, and it was like 5-4. It was, it was crazy. I've never seen a team play that well. And it was like with Kai Havertz, Timo Werner. It was with the players that aren't on the team no more, but... I mean, he has moments of being a great coach, but he, I just – I don't see him long-term coming back to the Prem. Yeah, it's interesting how he can be so good in moments and then have an absolute implosion at Bayern. Like, I'd, I'd almost give him a pass for Chelsea, but absolutely no pass for, mm -hmm. for Bayern. But um, I'll throw this one up there because it made me maybe chuckle. But we'll, we'll talk about it somewhat seriously. Um, Southgate as a great as a great chap. Um, I am certainly not a fan of England's uh, international setup. Uh, him as a manager leading it, but I'll, you know, but somewhat seriously, do you think he gets a top job after the, the England job? Do you think Liverpool are even considering him to keep it in the Liverpool realm? I don't think Liverpool are considering him at all, just because he's not their type of coach. Um, I could see him going to like Man United, uh, that type of club. But I mean, he's literally has some of the best talents on the planet and can't win nothing. Like, I'm sorry, but there, there comes to a point where you guys got to realize this guy does not know how to coach. I saw some stat him like he played like 40 games against teams that are in like the top 10 or top 20. He won like four, four out of 24. He's not a good manager. He could win against like teams ranked at 150 plus, but. If you look at his matches when uh, it matters, he, he's really not uh, really good against a good team. So he's had, he has the craziest talents. He has the best English players, yet he has nothing to prove. So it's just like um, the U.S. coach. Uh, what's his name? Bellhalter. You have the best talent of the year era. You just, you're just just going to break it. So I don't think he's a good coach at all. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's – I. <sighs> I, England has like the easiest qualifying group and every like and they've had like the easiest group stages in, in the World Cup and the Euros and whenever it gets to when it counts they they've choked so uh, I think they were unfortunate against penalties in Italy but yeah I think you said it best it doesn't really suit Liverpool's style it's too defensive mm -hmm. um but I'll be curious to see where he ends up after the Euros if he takes a job in the Prem or who takes him? I hope it is United. That'd be, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be something. I'll, I'll bring this one up since it's on the manager front. I, to be honest, I don't know much about Sebastian uh, from Stuttgart. Um, I, I remember reading him in an article of um, top managers across Europe, but I honestly don't know much about him. I can't imagine he's had enough experience with Stuttgart, uh, regardless of how well they're doing. Um, but do you know anything about him, Menti, or do you think any outside chance of names we're not even discussing get um, are getting pulled for Liverpool manager? Uh, I'm not too sure about him. Uh, I know Stuttgart's doing very well in the Bundesliga this year, but um, not too much. And like you said, um, I feel like Ruben Almeren just has like a good amount of experience. He has more experience than... Um, Alonso as well. So um, we'll see. I, I, I don't know who Sebastian is. I, I could look at him maybe. And then the next time I come back on, we could talk about it more. But I haven't, I don't know too much about that manager. That's fair. Um, and we'll throw these two out, uh, keeping it a little more local. Uh, Paul Lindo mentioned Ange. Jay Muse mentioned Ange. And we'll round it up with um, another Paul Lindo shout for Gary O'Neill. Do you think any um, Premier League managers would make the jump to Liverpool? You know, Rodgers made the jump. Was it Swansea to Liverpool? Um, still scarred from those years a bit, uh, as much yeah. as good football was. But um, do you think there's any local managers from the Premier League who have an outside chance of getting picked for Liverpool manager? 
If if we don't get Almarin, um, Paul Shout isn't bad. Uh, Gary O'Neill is pretty good. He, I, I've watched some of his matches. His style of play is very appealing. Um, um, it's, I don't. It's his first year in the Prem, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, I mean, I don't know if he's ready to make the jump to Liverpool, but I mean, that's a very good shout. I'd rather take him over the other ones, over Ange. I don't think Ange. I don't want Ange. He's just too stubborn with that high line. Like I watched today's matches against. Uh, West Ham, if it was like a team like Liverpool, we would have put up like four or five goals. I just, I don't know. And he makes his subs a little bit too late for my liking. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think Ange is ready, but Gary O'Neill probably might be the best one. Yeah, Gary O'Neill certainly has had um, an interesting tenure. I think he was Bournemouth in the last year. Um, I could. Yeah, I'm blanking on his trajectory, but. Um, Trying to think, yeah, Ange is not. I don't know. I think because it coming from Celtic uh, to Tottenham, I know he did well with Celtic, but I don't think that's enough experience. I think Gerard. Uh, we'll see what um, we'll see what Ange does after another year because it looks like Tottenham might miss out now. It'll be very interesting to see uh, who finishes in that fourth spot. For me, that my outside shot would be Emery, honestly. I always – like, I know, like, um, I think he had a harsh deal at Arsenal. Uh, I think he did well with PSG, considering the egos he had to manage. He's been absolutely amazing in the Europa League. As he was coaching Sevilla, and he coached um, – was it Villarreal to the – won the mm-hmm. on the final with them. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that I'd pick him, but yeah. as an outside consideration, I think he's done a lot of good and uh, he's a you know, pretty sharp coach. But uh, any shot for Emery or would you even at least put him on the long list? I mean, I mean I'd put Emery up there, but I, I doubt he'll leave Aston Villa just because he's doing very well with them. Um, he's backed by Aston Villa like very well. Uh, that's just the difference between uh, his time at Arsenal and Aston Villa. Like, the club believes in him. They're going to give him the time. He didn't need much time, obviously, because he hit the ground running. Um, but I, I literally just don't see him coming to us. He is a very good coach. Um, I can see O'Neal, you know, before uh, Emery. Oh, that's fair. All right, we'll move on from the manager talk. Uh, I'm sure there will be much more later. But uh, an interesting – News headline that came out was uh, Pedro Marquez. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but the Benfica technical director. um, Seems like FSG are pulling uh, Marquez in for the Boston-based company rather than Liverpool specifically. Uh, And the quote from The Athletic was that they're seeking to utilize his expertise to attract global talent. Uh, A little brief uh, clips from the article to set it up. uh, Marquez was formerly a first-team performance analyst at Manchester City uh, when Ward was a scout at the club, Julian Ward. Marquez later switched to coaching and analysis lead post for City Football Group, the multi-club model that owns or has shares in Manchester City, Girona, Melbourne City, and other teams around the world. Marquez spent six years working at Sporting Libsyn, working across coaching, performance analysis, recruitment, Prior to growing the city in 2010, uh, after eight years, he returned to Portugal as Benfica's youth technical director uh, and follows the re- return of Michael Edwards to FSG in the CEO of football role, uh, Richard Hughes becoming the new sporting director. So uh, what do you think about Pedro Marquez? Do you think this is more built for that kind of uh, overarching role of um, maybe in partnership with Edwards, adding a new club under the umbrella of Liverpool, or do you think this is like, do you think this is a movement more towards uh, Portuguese football? Maybe that's the club we're looking at for buying like a sister club to Liverpool. How do you, how do you see this? Um, basically, how do you see the signing impacting Liverpool? Um, they're saying it's for the second club. I, I just could see it, it, it being beneficial for Liverpool as well as the club we're going to end up buying. Um, just because he does have an eye for talent. Um, I was reading a little bit into him. Um, he was the big reason why Enzo ended up at Liverpool. Um, I guess FSG was impressed by that situation. Uh, but he's uh, as was, I think, Enzo Fernandez. Um, 
and then it was John Neves and actually, uh, what is it, Gon- Gonzalo Ramos, the one that went to PSG. He was the one that brought those players as well. So he has the eye for talent. Um, I think his resume speaks for itself. So I feel like it should be for Liverpool to benefit Liverpool, but it looks like they're going for the route of both. They're saying it's for, you know, the Edwards, but I could see them, you know, just picking up players and, you know, if they're capable of playing in the first team. I mean, we'll see how it works out. I, I just think they're just building an infrastructure that, that could be self-sustaining after Klopp. Um, as long as it's not like like when Fergie left United, you saw how that ended up. They're, they're still, you know, trying to come back to their glory days. Um, FSG, they're making sure that doesn't happen with us. So I think it's a good hire. Uh, 100%. It's interesting to see all these moving pieces behind the scene that aren't necessarily directly related to the club, or mm-hmm. at least directly impacting. It's, it just seems like there's much more, as you said, like uh, thought into the whole project rather than mm-hmm. just like a direct Klopp replacement, sort of the Ferguson. It's like, oh, we'll bring in Moyes and just do the same as mm-hmm. uh, Ferguson. It seems like they're totally looking at the future and uh, creating a great structure to you know, hopefully carry the club on from Klopp because it does seem like Klopp's been, uh, this, uh, I guess, uh, you know, you can knock Edwards and Julian Ward for their time, but it'll be interesting to see that post-Klopp model. But uh, on this um, on this track, uh, with two questions here. Uh, Andy chiming in with, uh, I think the Benfica guy is going to be used for multi-club model to sign players for the new team. You know, sort of alluding to what you're saying, Maddie. And um, I'll bring this up from Jay Muse. I was going to save it for the end, but I think it's a good thing to ask at the moment with the uh, with the Marquez uh, news. Uh, would you prefer a second FSG club from South America, MLS, Portugal? Um, Marquez kind of makes it seem like it could be from Portugal, but Menti, do you think that it's going to be Portugal and where would you choose if it wasn't Portugal? Honestly, I don't I don't have a preference, but I was watching like our stream earlier and like Carter said something like that was dope. Um honestly, I don't care as long as we don't like kill the tradition of the club that we buy. Um like you know, Liverpool were known as to be that, you know, honest club uh for for the fans first. Um I know a lot of clubs just you know, that had the multi system like um City they literally would just like just buy players, you know. They would like lowball the transfers, like what they did with Savio. Um, but honestly, as long as we're not harming the tradition of the club that we buy, um, honestly, I don't care too much where it is because at the end of the day, it's the only to benefit Liverpool as well as benefit the second club we buy. Because they, 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 they're fans too. We got to think of it from their perspective. Imagine Liverpool buying a club and just ruining everything, you know, taking their best players every season. Taking that like that as a fan, I would hate it. But um, as long as it's a good system, hopefully um, I could see Portugal just because if you're buying someone from uh, if you're getting a technical director from there. So he knows that area. Well, um, we do like Portuguese players. So we'll see how that works out. So Portugal would not be a bad shout. Yeah, no, I, I think everything's kind of pointing in that direction, but really love what you said. Uh, shout out Carter. That's a, brilliant way to look at it you wouldn't want liverpool to ruin that local um what the club's all about whoever we do buy but i'll throw out a shout out for me this is just selfish reasons mostly but if uh if fsg invested in an mls club uh to heighten the mls uh, i think for me i always thought it was the dream like when um it was city with new york city fc i think barca has a club connection i'm not as up to date on mls but I always thought that if you had more partners with bigger clubs, if Barca had a club, if Real had a club, Liverpool, every all the big teams, then you could almost send your youth players to play in the MLS. Like instead of loaning them to like League Two or League One clubs or et cetera, they could go play in the MLS and then learn from the likes of the older, um, almost you know, retirees from football, but. I'd still think you could get a lot of lessons. Like if you're playing with Messi, if you played under Suarez, Messi, you know, et cetera, at Inter Miami, you could learn a lot as like a kid at 16, 17, 18. It'd be a very, and it'd certainly make the MLS more entertaining for me if I could watch uh, 
some yeah. Liverpool youngsters uh, play in the league. So that's that's my selfish um, what I think FSG should do. But I do think a Portuguese club would be very interesting because I also like the idea of um, learning about a new league or more in depth in a new league and being able to follow another club from another country uh, and kind of invest in that as well. So that'd be a lot of fun. But um, yeah, here's why. Tyler. Here's why. Here's why I say you shouldn't get an MLS team. Um, just because I mean. They don't have relegation, so like the players, if you say you send a youth player there, they, they don't know how to like battle for something. So no matter how bad you do in the MLS, you're gonna stay up. And I think that's why that concept of the MLS, like it, it makes no sense to me. Like they needs to be a relegation system. That's how soccer is in Europe. That like players play different, teams play different. Like your infrastructure is different. That's that's the difference between US and Europe. So. Until then, honestly, it's cool that we get one, but I say just stay overseas. Yeah, that's that's fair. The culture is definitely hugely different and at a detriment to U.S. Mm-hmm. soccer. I yeah. agree with that. It's it's terrible for the sport and it just makes it blend in with American sports more. Yeah, Rather, that, you should have it stick out. Yeah, be different. Uh, all right, we'll uh, we'll move on from the news of managers and. Uh, technical directors and uh, go towards the game this Thursday. Sheffield United uh, home at Anfield. Sheffield United coming off um, what should have been arguably a win against Fulham at the weekend. I think they were 3-1 up and they just pulled and pegged them back and kind of took the wind out of Sheffield sales. That could have been a huge win for them, uh, potentially getting them back in the uh, relegation mix or outside of the relegation mix. But uh, Menti, how I don't want to say worried, but how serious do you think we need to take the Sheffield game? Do you think there's any easing the foot off the gas, essentially? Nah, nah. This is the final nine games. Players are coming back. Like you got to play. Like I, I say he's gonna keep the very similar lineups and maybe like make the changes a little bit earlier. But we shouldn't like take the breaks off just because if you remember Arsenal last year, like I was watching them play Southampton. Similar situation, like 19th, 20th place team. And I was like, they were, they were up 3 yard. I was like, what is happening? Like, I do not want to be in that situation just because if you, like, think of them any differently, they're going to come out, and if they get one goal, they're going to get confident. I mean, anything can happen in soccer. So, honestly, I say start with a strong team, make the subs early. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I love the shout-out to the Arsenal-Southampton game because that's it was quintessential. Crazy. Yeah, quintessential Premier League too. Like, I mean, we've already gotten uh, shock results, you know, loot in a way. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I know we're at Anfield at Sheff- against Sheffield, but you can't underestimate these teams, especially fighting, scrapping for, you know, scrapping against relegation. You're not going to get very many easy matches at this stage of the season. But I feel like this game yeah. is like a game to make up that goal difference. If we're, if we end up going to goal difference. Like we had to put up goals on these guys because when Arsenal was playing them, they put, they put up like five in the first half. I was like, "Yo, their goal difference was like, it, I gotta respect it." Arsenal, Arsenal is scary this year. So honestly, we gotta go in there and try to get it goals. Just everyone get your GA up. One hundred percent. I think the two like with the City and Arsenal both playing tomorrow. I'm just assuming that they're going to win. Mm-hmm. That would be the best way to go into the weekend it would be with a statement win. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter if y'all win. We're going to crush Sheffield United 6-0 at home. Uh, but, yeah, definitely agree with you, too. Like, get the business done, maybe take some players off. But I would look for a goal difference, as you said, because I don't want it to, like, be 3-0 at halftime and then start pulling players off and then have, like, Sheffield nick a goal 3-1 or, you mm-hmm. know, make yep. it harder than it has to be because, yeah. you know, after, I'm still uh, I'm still aching about the United uh, FA Cup exit and I think... Why did he take yeah. off so long and so was like... Mm-hmm. It was 2-1. I knew it was going to happen because the players were tired. I mean, uh, I don't want that to happen. I mean, I get it. It was FA Cup, uh, and I, I don't want to use that excuse. Oh, focus on the prep. No, no, no. We don't need to do none of that. Look at the next game. 
move on and then we just gotta you know dominate nine games to go players coming back and i know i know like every player that comes on they're gonna come on with the motivation like i gotta prove my worth to edwards i gotta prove my worth to the next manager so i think the players would be fine um but i just think we gotta just because we just gotta kill games early that's the one thing about cop sometimes we just don't kill games and it's just like it's just nerve-wracking watching it so hopefully we just get it done in the first first half We'll see how it yeah. is. Yeah, I uh, totally agree. It's like I'm, I'm definitely not one of the ones who are just like, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll we'll focus on the league and uh, yeah, you know, Europa League. It's um, it hurts. But yeah. the one silver lining for me is if, if that was the wake up call that pushes all the players to full focus for the league and Europa League, we then I'll be okay. But uh, this is a perfect example of a game that could be one where we just show up expecting to get it done and then Sheffield makes it hard. So, yeah. well, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'm wrong. Um, but, and we just absolutely smashed them another born myth nine mil or something like that, but that'd be amazing. Um, I'll bring this up. Uh, footy CC most excited. I've been about a title race for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's like, it's t- It's exciting and it's nerve wracking. Like, it's not just one, it's not just City, it's City and Arsenal for me, and it's wild to be at that. Like, I'm used to, like, the neck and neck, like, watching yeah. City's game, but I'm not used to watching, like, <laughs> another team, like, this close. Like, this is insane, but, uh, Menti, who do you, like, what do you think about the title race at this stage? Who do you think, like, who are you ranking City or Arsenal? Who do you think's going to give us the tougher run in, or... Yeah, comparison. I feel like, I mean, obviously me, I think we should win it. I've always said we should win it. I'm confident in the team coaching and everything. But this year it's just like it could change literally every week till the last day. I feel like this is the year where you see a three-headed title race as well. as like if you look at the relegation battle, it's kind of crazy. Like it's very exciting. So it's like, um, I don't know, it's like. What I do is like when if we have a game first, I watch our game and then I watch the next two games. Vice versa, if they're first, I watch theirs and then I the pressure's on us. So I think it's gonna be back and forth. Um, City is just like they've they've gotten a couple injuries and you can see it slightly affected them. But I mean they have players that are worth like hundreds of million dollars, so that should be no excuse to them. It's just the only thing this year is like they're not like the city for the past couple years where it's like the last you know twenty fifteen games they're just like they just click start scoring goals but now for both of them the the thing that's beneficial for us is they got champions league with like harder teams and then they got um i think they got the both of them got spurs city has them away um and then i think arsenal have to play them and then arsenal has to also play chelsea so they got two derbies um I, honestly i don't know it's in our hands um but i could see just changing weekly yeah, it's going to be especially interesting, like, for example, the midweek with them playing before us. It's going to be that mm-hmm. jump with, you know, Arsenal wins, et cetera. But, um, yeah, it's wild that it's this close. It's and, crazy. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that we have the lead right now. Like, all mm-hmm. out, like, games all played leveled, we're in the lead. And I just – Hope it's one of those where we have that leverage and we just don't let it go. We just keep yeah. pushing, pushing, just win the game, win the game, win the game, and make the other teams slip up. That for me is the, yeah, you know, uh, my mouth to God's ears kind of, kind of moment. <laughs> but, uh, uh, piggybacking on Arsenal and uh, City, though, uh, a fun question. I'll, I'll say it for, uh, for you, Menti and me. Uh, who do you hate more, City or Arsenal? I don't hate Arsenal as a club just because, like, I'm from Ethiopia, so I have a lot of, like, African relatives that love Arsenal. But, like, whenever I go on Twitter, I hate the, those Arsenal fans. Like, this new gen Arsenal fans are, like, terrible. Um, I just don't like City just because, I mean, they've been cooking the league for, what, like, four years? They're, they're pretty good. They're dominant. Um, I would say I hate City a little bit more than Arsenal. Um, I like Arsenal in their tradition. They have history, so it's like a club I respect. Um, but City, no, 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 no. I need City to lose. 
I, I, I need I need those FFP charges to come too. Get them out the way. Send them to the championship. I'm trying to see them play on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> it would be hilarious. Uh, Champions League winners down to the championship. But yeah, for me, um, I it's Arsenal. I hate Arsenal more, but not necessarily the players. Like I only dislike uh, Zinchenko and maybe Odegaard. Those are my two like players that I really dislike in the Arsenal squad. Everyone else, I'm the hair flick and merchant, hair flick and merchant Odegaard. Oh, bro, I hate that. He does it every game. I just but- can't get it. Like what he gets away with with the refs, like. Like, he will scream at refs when he thinks he's fouled. Mm-hmm. Like, and, like, never gets a yell card, never gets told off. He's just, like, he gets a pass. But then um, when he fouls uh, another player, same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he, I don't know, he's just, like, it rubs me the wrong way. But, um, I know exactly yeah, what you're same. talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not a big fan. Lee, Lee Gunner, he hates him, too. I'll be watching his streams. He's a very entertaining fan. He's a realistic fan, so. Yeah, it's always interesting when you get fans who uh, talk a little more um, bluntly about the club. But yeah, again, Arsenal fan base. I don't, I don't tend to. Wa- I used to watch like the Arsenal fan TV and other things like that, but uh, could care less now. Um, until you get it over the line, uh, I think it's just noise, and I. Just to, for me personally, I'm just like, all right, block that out. Just get the job done with Liverpool. We'll see where we end up at the end of the season. But uh, John Summers, you've been asking fire questions. I have two of yours starred that we'll answer at the end of the stream, but I want to pull up um, just to give you a little pull up here because I'm going to ask you questions later. But yeah, it's going to be. Villa and Spurs are huge games uh, that everyone has to play. I'm curious. Uh, I get off work a little early tomorrow, so I'm going to pop on the Man City Villa game uh, at halftime and see where we're at there. But um, we'll touch base now that we, we've talked about Sheffield. We'll look forward to uh, the weekend and touch uh, briefly on the Manchester United game since uh, we won't have another stream for Star Stripes and Field Nights until next Tuesday. Uh, Minty, how, how, uh, again, I don't want to say word because that's not the right attitude I want to put, but um, the Manchester United game away at Old Trafford, do you think they're going to be up for this game? Not Liverpool players. Do you think United? Do you think we get an easy game or do you think this is going to be another, another grueling match, potential banana peel? Honestly, this season, when it comes to Man United, it's like when you watch them, you literally don't know what you're going to get. Like they they could be literally some of the worst players, the worst team I've ever seen. Like last last game they played, it was like, I'm like, yo, what are they doing? They didn't play like that against us. But I guess if you're at home against your biggest rival and it's like it's going to be one of the biggest game, you know, it's going to be everyone's going to be watching it. It's going to be trending. They're going to be on another level. But for me, with the injuries, like I think Martinez got injured and Lindelof. We need to go in there and just put them out of their misery. Like, I want to see fans leaving. Like, this is Cobb's <laughs> last game at Old Trafford. I want to see them lose. Like, that last loss in the FA Cup, I was so salty. Like, I hate when United beat us. Like, we should have won that game. We just were not killing the game off. Um, But I think Kanate should be fit for that game. Uh, with Kanate back, I don't know when Trent's coming back. I don't think he's going to come back for that game, but. The way Diaz is playing, Salah's back to playing full 90 minutes. Dom's doing well. Uh, McAllister, what a beast of a guy. Player of the season. But um, I think we should be able to put them out. But, you know, knowing United against us, they they play pretty well. So we'll see how it is. I just don't know what United we're going to get. Yeah, totally, totally agree with that. And like you said, like coming up against your big rival for me, like Klopp's last game at Old Trafford. Mm-hmm. You know, we already saw the FA Cup. They, you know, that's something that gets remembered. Yeah, you, know, you like we go on to win the Premier League, we go on to win the Europa League. It's still going to be like, oh, United screwed up your quadruple. Yeah, and that for me is the danger at this point in the season with any game. Um, mm-hmm. Bring that up real quick, uh, uh, Jace Hickman's. If we don't concentrate on Sheffield, uh, we could trip us up. 
uh, Menti and I were already talking about how we cannot take that game like easy going, but mm-hmm. every single game is the potential for whatever team to have their statement to ruin the party, crash the yeah. party. Like you know, it reminds me of Jose Mourinho, uh, Chelsea against Rogers, and then the following week, Crystal Palace. Like everybody remembers like these these games that kind of cost the league where you lose the game. Like everybody's going to be watching the City games, the Arsenal games, the Liverpool games. And every team that we play is going to know that. Add, add it, like you said, the rivals of Manchester United. If they could, if, if they potentially beat us, it would be devastating. Devastating. So I'm a little worried, but like you said, we have everyone back now for the most part, minus mm-hmm. a few here and there. But the squad should be strong enough. I'm excited with um, Martinez and Lindelof out. We just can't afford – we can't afford to lose any game, but statement win against Sheffield and then just a nice, you know, just a nice easy win against United would be great. Like you said, I loved it. Like fans leaving early. I, I, I It sounds crazy, but I really want to see the fans literally walk out that. And they got to put Ten Hag out of misery. Like he is a fraud of a coach. Like I'm pretty sure they've faced, the, what, the second most shots in the league besides Sheffield. Like the chances are going to be there. We just gotta kill. That's it. If we go in the mindset where we're scoring, um, I think we should be well. I think we should be good. Yeah, I think agree. If the FA Cup again, like if that was the wake up call, like no one's gonna be sleeping or taking it easy against mm-hmm. United at Old Trafford after that. Yep. But uh, we'll start uh wrapping up the stream soon so everyone in the chat just want to say well, I'm not ending yet but just want to say thank you for throwing in your comments your questions we really appreciate you uh each and every week joining the streams and making this a great environment to be in a great community uh, community really appreciate it i probably never say this or only say it once a stream i like to keep it to once a stream but if you like subscribe uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, helps out the stream, helps out the channel, but really just appreciate y'all being here and com- um, being a part of the community and, you know, commenting, watching everything uh, really helps make this uh, stream worth it and something to look forward to each week. Uh, as we say that, get in your questions. I'll bring up to you from John Somers. He's been lighting it up in the, in the comments all night. Uh, bring this one up. I'll start with the the one that's a little sadder. <laughs> um, hi guys, do you think Tiago has played his last game for us? It's such a shame, such a talent, but his body is shock. Um, Menti, do you think we've seen the last of Tiago? Yeah, for sure. It's Edwards. <laughs> it's like I love Tiago. Like when he played for us, awesome, very talented guy. But honestly, for how much the club is paying him, like. It sounds crazy, but you got to go. He got a lot of money from us. He hasn't played at all. So, um, yeah, I think it's the last kid, last year with us. Same with Matip. Yeah. I don't see Matip resigning either because Gerald Kwanzaa definitely took that spot. Yeah, it'll be a yeah, great, great shout on bringing Matip up because it's hard. It's almost like easy to forget him with how much yeah. Kwanzaa has stepped up. Um, Curious, I think I read something about him potentially stepping into like a player coaching role, which would be interesting. That'd be good um, he's not, yeah, I don't think he's on high wages at all either. So I would keep him around another year, not as like a, not taking anyone's spot. Like I'm curious if Sepp uh, Vanderben uh, comes back. I know he's been doing well in the Bundesliga. Um, so I wouldn't want Matip to take anyone's place, but. Uh, be a shame to miss him but at the same time i think we've learned from henderson um and other examples ox um yeah. hate to, holding on to players that are injury prone or getting old uh you can't it's detrimental to the development of the team and in that umbrella as you said tiago <laughs> how much we paid him and how long he's been at the club I've hardly seen him which is a shame because of the quality of player he is but yeah yeah what what are we going to do um Let's see. And the other, uh, just want to highlight that for a sec. Um, other comment from John Summers I was going to bring up. 
and I just unclicked it, but I will find it uh, in a sec. I remembered it. So it's essentially what do we think of um, Tyler Morton and Carvalho? Um, do you, do we think they have a future place in the squad? Menti, what do you think about Morton and Carvalho? Honestly, if it's Amarin, they they do just because he he really likes using youngsters. Like if you look at Sporting right now, very young players, so he relies on the youth a lot. Um, so them playing so well on loan, it's only gonna benefit them when the new manager comes. So it's they're gonna have their preseason everything to prove their worth. Um, so if if they do well with the audition with the manager, I mean it could benefit us and them. So we'll see. I'm open to it. They're doing well. Uh, I'm always for giving them a shot, um, but you know we'll see how that works out. Because you know, once a player gets in that loan system, if, if you get stuck in that, you know you're going to eventually be sold. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one to be in. Uh, I like Tyler Morton. I think he's with the games we've seen him play for us. Um, you know, he's done well on his loan spells, but it does kind of seem like almost like potentially a Harry Wilson scenario where yep. just does well on loan, but you know, gets us 20 million or whatever it is. Um, Carvalho, I'm curious to see, uh, especially with the new manager, depending on who it is, definitely offer something else. If we get a manager that plays with the number 10, be exciting to see him and potentially Elliot. But uh, like you said, the, the age of these players comes into factor too. Like uh, for, you know, for me, I always forget how young Elliot is, but and it was only like last year or the year before people were saying we needed to loan him or potentially move him on, Curtis Jones, et cetera. But uh, it's, it's amazing that we're seeing so many youngsters break through and, you know, show up on loan or, you know, Kwanzaa yeah. and Bradley. But uh, building on that, uh, Paul Lindo Gomez versatility. Does he have a starting spot? Let's say we'll go with that back three. Uh, no signings, just – you know, Verge, Canate, obviously, you think Kwanzaa is ahead of Gomez uh, as that third option for center back, Menti? Is Kwanzaa left-footed? I don't think so. Honestly, I, I want to see a left-footed center back play in that position just because Gomez is good. I don't think Gomez um, – he's going to start, like, some games, but I don't see him as, like, a full-blown starter. He's He literally just turned into, like, James Miller type player. Like, he's a beast. Um but I feel like they're going to buy a left-footed center back just because I feel like it's easier to pass with a left-footed rather than, like, Joe Gomez. Like, Joe Gomez is great, but I've seen sometimes his passes on that side. is just, like, if he was left-footed, it would have been more direct and better, but we'll see how it is. Yeah, it's uh, – I think you're right. I think it's begging for a left-footed center back and a position that would get a signing for, uh, especially since – I think Kanate doesn't have the best injury record, neither does Gomez. Um, so you might end with uh, Mata about. Thankfully, we've had Kwan to step up because I don't know where we'd be without him filling in uh, with the injury, the injuries we've had at center back. And I'm still amazed that Gomez has had a full season without, uh, without any long-term injuries. But uh, I guess that's all I'm seeing for questions. So, We'll uh, start to wrap it up now, but Menti, any any final thoughts on the stream and uh, uh, score predictions for Sheffield and Man United? Nah, not nah, a great stream, you know, pleasure um, for predictions for Sheffield. Honestly, I know we haven't kept a clean sheet in so long, but please keep a clean sheet. That's all I ask for. Uh, I'll, I'll accept anything 4-0 and above. I just want a clean sheet. That's it. Like, and I saw someone saying uh, Anfield isn't a fortress. I think it was BBC Sport. I was like, y'all should be ashamed of yourself. Like, that's crazy. But uh, and for United, five zero. I want to see them leave the stadium. I'm telling you, it's. I want to see. I want to feel like that one game when Keita uh, scored and Salah had a hat trick. I want to feel good. I want to have a great weekend. You know, I could wish as a fan. Uh, that is fair and a, a worthy wish as well. Um, I, I'm worried about Liverpool players getting injured. Actually, on the low for the United for the United game, so I'm gonna go with a three 0 win, maybe two 0 in the first half, or just take not take the foot off the brake, but 
uh, make sure our players are fit. Yep. And, you know, maybe get that final goal of Cody Gakbro coming on or something like that, getting uh, three, th- make it 3 nil in like the 80 something minute. Um, you know, I'll throw this up there 8 nil against Sheffield. I'll throw out the why not? Uh, why not? We'll see what happens. But, uh, Philip getting in here with uh, four nil against Sheffield and the United game three one. Take That's that as well. One. Any yeah, any wins at this point keeping us ahead, uh, I'll take. But uh, solid wins, clean sheets, as you said, Minty, and mm-hmm. no injuries. I'll be happy, man. But yeah. All right. Um, thank you again, everyone who joined us in the chat. Uh, Star Stripes Anfield Knights every Thursday uh, at six. PM Pacific time when it starts, uh, 8 PM Eastern time in between it's two in the morning in the UK, wherever you are, we appreciate you, uh, chiming in, help, helping this community grow. Uh, thank you for staying with us tonight. Uh, it's Jamie, you said you'll never walk alone. Uh, thank you Menti, for joining us and let's hope for a, uh, for two wins coming up this week. Have a great weekend.